This is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. About 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and, and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the Joint Staff who had used, used to work for me. And one of the generals called me and he said, sir, you got to come in. You got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, well, you're too busy. He said, no, no. He says, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq. Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to Al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And um, he said, I guess if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later, and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, and he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. Citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. We had a chance to talk about uh, a, a wide range of international issues, including the situation in Syria. Uh, and I have to say that all of us who have been seeing the terrible pictures coming out of Syria and homes recently uh, recognize it is absolutely imperative for the international community to rally and send a clear message to President Assad that it is time for a transition, it is time for uh, that regime to move on. Both had different reasons, the State Department and the White House, for wanting Israel to do it, encouraging them to do it, supporting them. Our Air Force worked very closely with the Israeli Air Force for months before this, not necessarily with a deadline, knowing when it would happen. It was always going to be whenever there was an incident, they would take advantage of an incident. Of, they would, the word I used was fortunate timing, when the Hezbollah grabbed some of the um, Israeli soldiers in early J July. That was then a pretext, I think that's the only word, for a major offensive that had been in the works a long time. Today we can definitively say that the Gaddafi regime has come to an end. The last major regime strongholds have fallen. The new government is consolidating the control over the country. Well, violence isn't only on the rise in Afghanistan. In fact, it looks like America's shadow wars have now increased by one. Drone strikes have long been reported in Pakistan and Yemen, but now there's news that a week ago, a U.S. drone aircraft fired on two leaders of the Somalian organization Al Shabaab. Sudanese President Salafa Kiir is blaming the United States for the collapse of the most recent peace talks held in Ethiopia. It's been about three years since Saudi Arabia launched its air campaign over Yemen with the goal of disrupting the Houthi movement. The Houthis are a minority in Yemen and they've been conducting an insurgent campaign for many years in northern Yemen. Support that they received from Iran, which at the beginning of the conflict was fairly modest. These are the recovered pieces of a missile fired by Houthi militants from Yemen into Saudi Arabia. These weapons were supplied by the Iranian regime. Over time, the war has emboldened Iran to provide additional support to the Houthis. The founders did not intend for the commander-in-chief power to be used to justify military intervention in civil wars 8,000 miles away. The United States doesn't have a direct interest in the, the, the Houthi conflict, but what the United States does have an interest in in Yemen, uh, it's twofold. Number one, the United States wants to support a, a key ally, Saudi Arabia. And secondly, the United States really takes seriously the growing regional influence of Iran, especially the Trump administration is particularly focused on this issue. 
The United Nations calls this the most severe humanitarian crisis of our day. There are millions of Yemenis suffering from cholera, from other diseases. There are 11 million Yemeni children in need of humanitarian assistance. Iran has denied American accusations that it attacked two tankers in the Gulf of Oman on Thursday. The vessels were hit while traveling through the Strait of Hormuz. The blasts have raised concerns about the possibility of a new U.S.-Iran confrontation with Tehran accusing Washington of sabotage diplomacy. Both vessels were hit with explosions, forcing crews to abandon ship in the waters of the Strait of Hormuz between the UAE, Oman and Iran. Washington has pointed the finger of blame solely at Iran. Tehran has denied the accusations, instead accusing the U.S. and its regional allies, including the United Arab Emirates, of warmongering. The Strait of Hormuz is a crucial shipping passage. A third of the 60 million barrels of oil that move each day pass through the waters. But Iran has threatened to block the passageway if it cannot sell its oil due to U.S. sanctions that were recently imposed after Washington pulled out of the 2015 nuclear deal with Tehran. There are questions here about the timing of this. Why would Iran have chosen to do this at the very moment that the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was engaged in talks with top Iranian leaders and beginning some kind of overture with Tehran? Uh, and should the proof of this not, in fact, be taken to the United Nations? That, at least, is what some members of Congress are calling for, concerned that the Trump administration may be thinking about some kind of military reprisals. Well, this is a major strategic passage for oil. We, we don't know yet if it was Tehran or indeed someone else. But in any, in any event, what could America realistically do about it? Well, in the immediate hours uh, after these events, the Trump administration announced that it was moving a naval destroyer uh, to the scene, the USS Mason. It said in a statement uh, released by the Pentagon that that destroyer would be assisting uh, in rescue efforts, although clearly that destroyer could also be uh, a flexing of military muscle, uh, a sort of uh, rhetorical, symbolic shot uh, across Iran's bows. Uh, as I say, there are figures within the Trump administration, particularly uh, the president's national security advisor, John Bolton, who are very hawkish on the subject of Iran and uh, ha have appeared at times in the past eager to foment some kind of conflict in the region.